I finished creating my segmentation boundary. I created a couple base frames, these gold bars, and I've propagated that initial information throughout the length of this clip. Next, I want to refine the matte outline, and there's a few ways of going about it. Now, you might have noticed that this pink outline, the segmentation boundary, doesn't exactly follow his hair, and you can decide how closely or loosely to follow that hair. That's the smoothing parameter. For example, if I was to take smoothing down to zero, you can see now we've got some crinkles that follow his hair in much more detail, particularly as I go from frame to frame. If I decided I didn't want that much detail, if I want a more feathered outline, I'll go ahead and increase smoothing to a higher value like five, and now it just creates a basic smooth boundary. If you want to see what that looks like, you can turn off the segmentation boundary, the alpha boundary, and look at it either against a checkerboard or against just a black background. Now, in addition to having a smoothed or sharp outline, you can decide how much feather there is around that outline, basically how wide the anti-aliasing falloff is. Feather only comes into play if smooth is a value other than zero. So let me go to one where it's smoothed out a little bit, increase feather to 100%. Now you see I have a much more anti-aliased falloff than if I was to put the feather down to say zero, which is not anti-aliased at all. I'll go around 50 for now. Additionally, if you've got problems, either with the edge being eroded away, or if you're seeing part of the background when you shouldn't, you can go ahead and change the choke percentage. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this so I no longer see that white contamination along the edge. To around there, that's a good looking edge. Alpha boundary, black background color. But these are but crude tools. The best tool of all is the Refine Matte checkbox. As soon as you turn that on, a few things go on. One, the edge is much better smooth, particularly taking partial transparency and motion blur into account as he moves. You see on these frames, he's moving less. There's less blur around the edges. And when he's moving more, there's more of a blurred edge. This is even more obvious when we view just the black and white alpha channel. Particularly if I go around here where he's moving particularly fast, you can really see how much blur is going on as he pulls his head back in this direction. The side of his face is being blurred in the direction he's moving. Since the collar lines up with the direction he's moving, it's not as blurred. So it's not an all around blur. It's not an all around feather. It is indeed a motion predictive motion blur. Now right around here, I'm seeing just a little bit of strobing going on. I probably need to use more motion blur samples. Go up to number like 16 and get a much smoother motion blur in through there. The shutter angle is at 360 right now, which is higher than the default and higher than normal. A typical film camera emulation is 180 degrees of motion blur. But I had it set at 360 because I really want you to see that effect. I'll go back down to 180. There is a higher quality switch. You don't always need it. It does take more calculation time. But if you're finding you've got some problems with some edges, particularly very blurred edges, higher quality gets you a little bit more detail in those highly blurred edges. I turn off my alpha channel, go back to my image for now. Now in addition to smoothing out and automatically motion blurring that matte outline, there's a couple other things it does. One is reduce chatter, and I mentioned this earlier. Quite often when you have noisy footage, um, film grain, a lot of smoke or dust in the air, what should be a straight, flat, not moving edge may seem to sizzle a little bit or chatter a little bit just because the prediction's thrown off by all that noise or dust or whatever. Reduced chatter basically damps that down and says, don't make that edge move. See how much it's moving. If it doesn't cross a threshold, then keep it where it was. And again, you can adjust this to taste, depending on whether or not you're seeing edges get eroded away, then you've got the reduced chatter cranked too high, or whether or not you're noticing that the edges are indeed sizzling when they shouldn't be, then reduced chatter is too low. Another great feature in here is decontaminate edge. Basically, this says remove color spill. Just like when you key, background color will wrap around an object and contaminate the color of your foreground. This is particularly an issue in motion blurred areas because those are partially transparent and the color behind is the background, which you don't necessarily want to see. So you almost always want to have decontaminate edge turned on. And if you need to tweak it out, you go ahead and view exactly what area is being decontaminated. This white area is how far After Effects is automatically motion estimating needs to be contaminated. You can go ahead and increase the area being decontaminated 
You can play around with the strength of the decontamination. And then there's this additional parameter, extend where smooth. And I'll open up this compound a little wider so you can see that full wording there. This parameter only affects edges which have been moved or stabilized to reduce edge chatter. When it's enabled, it says decontaminate the background color a little bit more around these areas because the edge is in a different place than we originally predicted. And I'll turn off view map. Now what's really interesting about this refined mat area is not only is it extraordinarily useful for cleaning up mats that Rotobrush creates, it exists as an entirely separate plugin you can apply to any layer with a mat, whether you've created it with paint, masks, keys, whatever, you can slap on a dedicated refine mat plugin that uses all of these parameters to go ahead and clean up your edges, do the predictive motion blur, do the spill removal, etc. It's really a nice touch. It came on free on the back of Rotor Brush. Now, before we go, I do have to say, not every piece of footage is going to be as easy to rotor brush as this piece was. This one was particularly cooperative. Other shots will be more problematic, particularly when you have arms swinging and legs swinging, when you have to remove sections between arms and legs. It's going to take some more work. You're going to need to spend some more time making corrective strokes with rotor brush to check what the good and bad areas are. But what's important to note is that you don't need to rely on rotor brush alone. You can use other tools to augment rotor brush. For example, if there were some problems with this black and white alpha mat, I could use my paint tools to go ahead and alter this mat. Paint on just the alpha channel, paint on just this frame. If I paint with white, I will then be adding to the alpha channel. If I'm painting with black, I'll then be removing from the alpha channel. You can also use masking and other techniques. So rotor brush should not be viewed as either it works or doesn't work. It should be viewed as this is going to do a lot of my work for me, and then I can refine my work later on, either playing around with parameters, additional corrective strokes, or by using tools such as paint to further clean up and finish off the mat.